All right. Let's jump back in. We're on volume 13. I have to scroll further and further now. Uh, let's see. Volume 13 of Fate, Fortune, and Fashion. Blah, blah, blah. Friendship, blah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That was hilarious. Lazy, but hilarious. <laughs> so, for those of you who have not... For those of you who are new to my Hive Swap friend sim streams, basically at the beginning of every volume, there's just like this brief exposition about where the main character is right now and where they're going. And there's always some statement about how you want friendship. And friendship is always in big yellow capital letters to emphasize it and give me a reason to talk in this voice like this. And <laughs> this time they're just like, blah, 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 friendship, blah. I appreciate that. I approve. All right. So we've got... Boulder or Boldir? I'm just gonna go with Boulder for now, unless the canon pronunciation is in fact Boldir. Um, if someone in the brain trust knows the proper pronunciation, I will happily defer to that. And then Stelsa. And they both look adorable. Actually, B Boulder looks really adorable. <laughs> like, I really like this outfit. And Stelsa just looks like a cool person to hang out with, so... Uh, let's see how this goes. All right. You just aren't feeling it today. You're getting more and more of these gray nights recently. Nights where the call of the streets, that infinite ramble for companionship, just sounds exhausting and meaningless. Wow, that's a mood that I can relate to. <laughs> you had days like this back on Earth, too, when getting out of bed just didn't seem worth it. The sun is just beginning to slip under the horizon, and usually this would be the sign to rise and shine, or rise and dark. But all you've managed to do so far this evening is make yourself some coffee. And you know what? Some days, if you can just get yourself out of bed and just make yourself some coffee, that's good enough. We're all out here doing our best, I think. You recently mentioned to Tagora that you drank instant, and he was so disgusted that he gave you a coffee machine. <laughs> he claimed it was an old one he doesn't use anymore, but it still had the price tag on it. Oh, Tagora, that's so sweet of you, actually. <laughs> For how weird Tagora is. Tagora has... Tagora can be sweet. <clears throat> Rise and not shine. Exactly, Bug. Exactly. On the table sits a palm husk Coddle had taken off a dead kid, especially for you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Coddle. That's right. <laughs> Unless you're Kanaya, oh god. Yeah, that's right. When we were hanging out with Connell, Connell did murder a few trolls and then gave us one of their palm husks. So, <laughs> just lie in bed and watch videos of funny per beast. That's right. That's a good way to... to spend a morning. Where you just don't feel like getting up and doing life. Uh, let's see. On the table sits a palm husk, palm husk Connell had taken off a dead kid, especially for you, and cradled in your hand is a mug Sk Skyla sent. Oh, Skyla! I love Skyla, too. Skyla's one of my favorites as well. It looks like she painted it herself. There's a white blob on one side that you think is supposed to be Lady. You're even wearing the hoodie Malik gave you to cut the evening chill. Oh my gosh, we have so many things that our friends all gave us because we're making so many friends now. Here you are, all wrapped up in the warm embraces of your friend's goodwill, safe and sound, but deep inside you festers something. A gnawing existential dissatisfaction. That classic angst the philosophers wrote about. Your palm husk chimes and you pick it up lazily. What, another rando trying to slide into your DMs? Sorry, folks. You just don't have time for that anymore. You are a friendship connoisseur. A sommelier, a sommelier, or sommelier, sommelier, how is that pronounced? How the dadgum heck is that pronounced? I have to know. We cannot carry on unless I know exactly how this is pronounced. The sommelier pronunciation. Sommelier, I believe. Sommelier, all right. Thank you, Google. I appreciate your effort. All right. You're a friendship connoisseur, a sommelier of the rarest of amicable vintages. Your palm husk chimes and you try to, and you pick it up lazily. 
Oh, whoops. <laughs> uh, you unlock the screen to find a message. Thanks, Bookworm. That jibes with what I found as well. Psst. I'm not certain that this line is... I'm not certain that this line is secure. Actually, I'm positive that it isn't, but I am risking contact because it is imperative that we speak. I'm sending you rendezvous coordinates. If you wouldn't mind coming any coming any time after the sun has set, Psst, I realize that this is unorthodox, but please believe me when I tell you that this is not a trick or a trap. I have important information regarding your place on Alternia. You you attempt to reply to the message, but there isn't a cursor or anywhere to input text. In fact, there doesn't even appear to be a messenger app open on your phone. It's just a random text box floating in the void. Oh, nice! This is a James Roach track. Awesome. Excuse me. You barely have a chance to read it all the way through before it vanishes and Gorgle Maps opens without with an address already programmed in. It's close enough to walk to you, which is great because using your stolen scuttle buggy still makes you a little nervous. Oh, that's right. We stole a scuttle buggy and the owner got killed by bees, I think, if I recall correctly. You swallow the rest of your coffee and grab your shoes. <clears throat> Your GPS leads you to a shop you recognize. It's the cafe from your weird sort of date with Lynera. It's not too crowded this time of day. The usual studying crowd doesn't appear to be here. A couple trolls are sitting around sharing pots of tea. <clears throat> Our daughter's here, oh my gosh. Fool, fucking idiot. I explicitly stated I wanted the essence of Dayglow, not whatever this garbage is. Oh, you know this person. It really has been a minute, hasn't it? Yeah, we haven't seen Ardata since Volume 1. Ardata stands in front of the counter, shouting at the cash register. Whatever automated system runs this shop has apparently gotten her order wrong. What are you looking at, hmm? This is absolutely none of your... Oh. It's you. Ardata swiftly covers up her surprise, examining a sharp, perfectly shaped nail. You look... different. Better? <laughs> Let's not exaggerate. I simply meant you looked less like toxic waste and more like run of the grain grinder garbage. You tell our daughter that it's good to see her too. Man, this really takes you back. You'd been so simple back then, so unevolved. You were laser focused on a single desire, friendship. Now, well, you still like friends, you really do, but you also have, like, a car and a sweatshirt with somebody's sign on it. You've moved up in the world. Fascinating. Oh, by the way, is she the one who summoned you here? Summoned? You? You must be joking. I haven't spared a single solitary thought for you since you dragged your wretched carcass out of my hive. Absently, you push your hand, you push your hand into the pockets of your hoodie. Something crinkles between your fingers, and you pull out a folded piece of notebook paper. Okay, this definitely hadn't been in there when you'd left your hive. <laughs> you pass a couple people in the street, but you definitely don't remember any of them getting close enough to slip something into your pocket. Huh. It only says two words. Out back. Oh man, should you go? Oh, alright, let's, let's save here. Close the menu. Alright, so should we go, go, go out back, or backyards are as bad as basements, no way? Let's uh, go with backyards as, are as bad as basements, no way. Let's go with that first. Okay, listen. You've done some pretty dumb stuff since you crash landed here. For instance, following the woman standing in front of you into her basement. But not this time. Nice try, Catfisher. Important correspondence. Nah, you crumple the page up in your hand. Nothing that can't wait. It does almost seem like there's a plot. Will we join the rebellion? That's I feel like this is what this is leading to hetero sapiens like there's been a lot of like underlying rebellion subplot happening here <laughs> Good impeccable timing just what I was hoping you would say Oh no, she's making us carry everything, all of her stuff. Oh no. Meanwhile, the person we we're supposed to rendezvous with is waiting for us and is angry because we didn't show up. No, we got friend blocked. 
Why did we think hanging out with our daughter would be a good idea? Why would that ever cross our minds? When will we ever learn? All right. Okay, this time let's absolutely go, 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 Outback. Go, go, go. Let's be real here. If you were ever going to refuse a suspicious invitation, you would have done it by now. You would have drawn the line at vehicle theft or murder church or anime club. <laughs> murder church, oh my god. We did do murder church, didn't we? You can't resist a social engagement. Your tragic flaw. <laughs> okay, I guess. Enjoy yourself. You head back through a beaded curtain, half expecting an alarm to ring. How do they keep people from just robbing the stores here? Are there, like, lasers and shit? <clears throat> you emerge into a tidy little back garden. None of the plants here are ones you recognize from Earth, but it's still nice. You cross a bridge over a slow-flowing stream, and find yourself looking down at a path that blooms into a tight, dizzying spiral. Maybe you're supposed to walk across it and ponder your place in the universe. Your contemplation would inevitably would be inevitably cut off before it hits its it hit its climax because someone is sitting at the center of the spiral. This is pretty bug. I actually kind of dig this this uh, garden back here. It looks pretty chill and zen actually. She is a small compact sh she is a small compact shape with her hair cut short and choppy around her chin, wearing a shapeless white dress. Really more of a robe. I have been waiting for you. Thanks for coming. She speaks in a stage whisper, low and full of air, but still loud enough to hear across the path. You pick your way carefully across the spiral, making sure not to mess any of it up, treading only inside the lines. The girl gives you a small, secretive smile. My name's Boulder. You ask her if this is her garden. Does she live here? It's nice, but it's not exactly out of the elements. Actually, it looks like there's some storm clouds rolling in. You're probably going to get rain soon. Oh yeah, my Recuperacoon is over there under that tree. She smiles again and you can't tell if she's messing around. In fact, she is entirely unreadable. Like, her face is a totally reflective surface and all you're seeing is the cloudy sky and the garden. You can't tell how she feels about you at all. <laughs> Behold my robes? Yes or no? <laughs> Low bloods know what would happen to them if they are caught stealing. High bloods have enough money to buy what they want. I wouldn't exclude laser and shit laser and shit though though. That that makes perfect sense, Hedro Sapiens. I I can I can get on board with that. Would you like to sit down? Inside the circle or She looks around like she is only just realizing she is at the center of a com complicated geometric pattern. It doesn't matter. I only wanted to see if you would follow the path or trample through it. <laughs> but you didn't either. You've forged your own way while ta taking care to preserve that which has come before. You ask her what that means. Hmm, maybe nothing. I'm not sure. The wind tosses her hair and the clouds chase each other across the sky. If the rain comes, it will come soon. Boulder, notice Boulder continues to look at you as you shift awkwardly and shiver, pushing your hands into your hoodie. This is different than any other friend meetup you've had, even with the others who purposefully sought you out. There is a serenity to Boulder that all the rest lack. Or maybe that's just this zen as fuck garden getting to you. <laughs> you try to remember what Boulder said to you in the message that she somehow managed to make appear on your phone and then immediately self-immolate. <laughs> that she has some information for you about your place in Alternia or some shit like that. Oh, did I say that? I guess I did. I just... Hmm... I suppose I wanted a chance to talk to you a bit before the end. I was starting to feel a little... Mm, jealous, maybe? Right. You guess everybody has been going on about the funny, dumb alien robot who's been prowling the countryside. No, that's not it. Though I'm sure you're very funny. <laughs> I just wanted a chance to talk to you. Someone who was so adrift in the swell of fate and the whims of the paradox. Paradox? You don't know you don't know anything about paradoxes. Well, you know what they are. You just don't see why they're relevant. They aren't. Paradoxes aren't relevant by their very nature. It's the essence of that nature that makes them so integral to this story. You shake your head. You are not built for this cosmic stuff. You're just an orphan from Earth with quick fingers for spaceships and apparently vehicles. 
Boulder gives you another sly smile. Oh, quick fingers. You blush. You hadn't meant that as a dirty joke or anything. Also, your fingers are nowhere near as quick as hers. She somehow got a piece of paper in your pocket while you were standing in a cafe, and she was back and she was back here. That's like reverse pickpocketing through astral projection. Boulder laughs. She stands up and moves across the garden path, following the spiral so swiftly and efficiently that she might as well be floating. She drifts over to one of the trees, pulling a coat down from where it's slung over a branch. It covers her from chin to ankles, coming together to form an olive green symbol on her chest that looks like a question mark without the dot. A broad-brimmed hat finishes out the ensemble. Well, I can't teach you astral projection, but pickpocketing is actually quite simple. Would you care to learn? Ideally, I'd, we'd need a third person to act as the mark, but I think we can make it work. More crime, huh? <laughs> Our choices are, sure, let's do crime, or no more crime, please. Yeah, let's do crime. Sure, let's do crime. This whole mess started with the theft of a spaceship, and if Boulder is right about all that fate horse shit, that was supposed to happen. So, maybe you'll lean into it. Yeah, let's lean into doing crimes. Perfect. The first and foremost aspect of the art of pickpocketing is staying unobtrusive. You think about mentioning that walking around in a great big coat and floppy hat is not the most unobtrusive thing you've ever seen, but you aren't the expert here. Also, you're an alien, so you, so you don't really have room to talk. Maybe you should get a big coat like that yourself. You just love ripping looks off of all your friends. <laughs> That's true. Boulder takes you through the basics of criminal sleight of hand, and on the whole, you aren't too bad. In fact, you think you might have a future in it if you weren't already on the career path of professional friendshipper. You don't know what this has to do with her learning about you or teaching you your place in Alternia, but it's fun, and Boulder is a good teacher. If there's one thing this journey has taught you, it's that when something isn't actively painful or destructive, just ride it out. You don't think you'll be going around pickpocketing many trolls, though. Enough of them already want to kill you. But it's good to have this skill on reserve if you ever need cash fast and don't feel like hitting up any of your rich friends. You wonder if Boulder uses it for anything besides passing notes. Psst, my sources tell me you've been on Alternia for almost three pedigrees now. Is that weeks? Peregrees are weeks, I think. You have no idea how long a peregree is, but what the hell, sure. Impressive. No wonder. She trails off thoughtfully and shakes her head. You wish she would just say something with some substance to it instead of just vague nonsense. But at least she isn't threatening you with violence or trying to stick wires into you, so you're counting on this interaction you're counting this interaction successful so far. Also, you fear will you feel weirdly chilled out with Boulder. Sure, you want to be friends, but there's none of that stomach churning, spine bending desperation to make sure she likes you at whatever the cost. You feel more awake than you have in weeks. Man, you've got to learn to pickpocket in a garden behind a cafe more often if this is what it does to your stress levels. Yo, Jennifer, how's it going? Happy Saturday. Welcome in. Want to get something to eat? Or maybe just coffee, because that's what they serve here. Sure, you could use another caffeinated beverage on top of the other caffeinated beverage you had earlier. Why not? You'll sleep when you're dead. Oh god, I hope it's not foreshadowing. <laughs> if only. You follow her out of the garden and back into the cafe. <laughs> Who is this now? Yet another friend? Oh, our daughter! You're still here! Of course I am, fool. You were back there for about ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes? Wow, it felt like way longer than that. Guess you underestimated the power of a good training montage. <laughs> a good training montage, oh my god. You introduce our Dada to Boulder with the cheerful earnestness of someone who has forgotten the, cl the systemic classism of the planet on which they currently reside. Our Dada stops you with an aristocratic sneer. Stop, stop, before I have to stop you myself. I have absolutely no desire to mix with those so low on the social ladder. What in the world could she have to offer me? You shrug. You're not sure. Maybe 
friendship? You know, fr you know, friendships between, you know, friendships between people of different castes are possible. You've seen them happen. Regardless, you feel bad for exposing your newest friend to the vaguely nonsensical abuses of your oldest. We turn back to Boulder to apologize and find her gazing coolly at our daughter like she could do like she could do it all night. There's none of the fear or reverence or false obedience you've seen other low bloods display to blues. Instead, Boulder looks at our daughter like she's a bug. Worse, a pebble that she would just love to kick out of the way. It's nice to meet you in person, Ms. Carmia. I hear your Grubtube channel has been losing subscribers recently. I wonder why that is. Blue hits our daughter's cheeks in an angry flush. I... I'm currently on hiatus. The old garbage was getting tired. I have so many imitators that my own content is starting to seem derivative. She gives one of her maniacal laughs, but it's a little less robust than usual. Man, the wild tundra of internet fame really is a stark and arid battleground. In fact, I have a new feature in the works as we speak. She holds up a little vial she'd been haggling with the cash, re cash register over earlier. Poison? I think the best and most expedient process would just be to dose my featured guest's food and then hide the antidote somewhere in my hive. Unless you have another idea. She smiles, sly and mean. Boulder just smiles back, just as vicious. Great, have fun with that. While Boulder talks, her eyes start flicking from you to Ardada and then down, again and again. You, Ardada, and down. It takes a couple of go-rounds before you realize what she is telling you. She keeps looking down to your hands, which are stuck in your hoodie pocket, exactly where you found the note Boulder slipped, slipped you. Our daughter is carrying a bag that looks expensive and extremely goth, and you can see where the vial of poison is sticking out. Oh man, you know what you have to do. Are we gonna pick po are we gonna pickpocket the poison? I almost said pick poison the pocket, but maybe that's also accurate. I don't know. Let's pick poison the pocket and pickpocket the poison. See? Meh, meh, meh. Everything's falling into place. When a group comes into the shop and pushes past the three of you, you move in on our daughter and slip a hand into her bag, palming the soothe cold vial. She gives you a weird look, like, why are you suddenly all up on me, peon? But she doesn't notice the theft. I suppose I'll be going now. And if I were you, I'd be more mindful of who I choose to associate myself with in the future. You say bye to her, feeling the tiniest bit guilty, but she's planning to use this poison to do murder theater in her prison basement, so you don't feel that bad. <laughs> Take care now. Our daughter leaves and Boulder le takes an inquisitive step closer. Psst, show me. You open your hand to display the spoils, flushed with criminal euphoria. Oh. Oh hell no. You grabbed the wrong fucking vial. This one is blue, not red. You grabbed the antidote, not the poison. God, you honestly thought you were moving past these kinds of cock-ups. Oh. Damn. Well, at least you have the antidote now. You never know when one of those might come in handy. She sways forward and clutches at her neck. For one confused second, you think she's doing an impression of someone who might need an antidote. Then she falls to her knees. You dart forward to catch her and catch her before she can totally eat it. She's heavier than she looks. Compact muscle and a coat full of full of an ungodly number of weapons. She has like four guns in here. What the hell? Her arms are full. You can only watch, helpless, as a troll in a hood that covers their face as a troll in a hood that covers their face and their horns books it out the door. You shout that some fucker just stabbed your friend, but nobody here is looking at you. It's the same way people on Earth might ignore a mother trying to calm a toddler throwing a tantrum, just turning their eyes away from a distasteful public scene. Ow! Damn it! You put a hand up to Boulder's neck to try to staunch the bleeding, but there isn't any bleeding. Bewildered, you pull apart the lapels of her coat to see a single drop of olive blood trembling above her collarbone. Discoloration spreads in a dark spill over her neck and radiating down her chest. You both say it at the same time. POISON! You open your hand to look at the tiny blue vial, and then back up to Boulder. 
Her eyes are glassy, her skin going blotchy and ashen. There is no reason to believe that our dot is poison and the poison the assassin used are the same, with the same antidote. It already strains the power of coincidence that you grab the antidote at all. You're probably right. But maybe you should try it anyway. I can't feel my legs. Right, right. Maybe the mere fact that this is an, such an unlikely happenstance means it will be the right antidote. Everything you've done so far has had the pull of inevitability to it, especially all your interactions with the boulder. Great! Awesome! I'm glad you're realizing your inherent significance to this particular microcosm of causation. <laughs> now, can you please pour that stuff in my mouth so I can swallow it and possibly not die? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. You help Boulder tip her head back and put the vial to her lips. At the last minute, you wonder if it's supposed to be diluted, but Boulder gulps the whole thing down and immediately begins to shake. Oh my god, what's happening? Smoke billows out of her nostrils and open mouth, and holy shit, what is going on? This doesn't seem like any type of antidote to you. But then the smoke clears, and Boulder opens up her big yellow eyes. How does she feel? Alive? <laughs> Marginally. <laughs> she lets you help her to her feet. You immediately pull her into a fierce, yet gentle hug. Oh. You meet uh, a fierce yet gentle hug. It's wild to undergo someone else's near-death experience. You feel like you know you know her way better than one montage scene's worth. What one montage scene's worth? Another new friend. Oh, a gentle hug for Boulder. <laughs> Not so tight. You ease up a little. All the tea sippers are staring at you now. Death apparently isn't interesting, but the possibility of some quadrant adjacent stuff they are suddenly all about. Sorry, assholes. Just you and your new friend sharing a touching post-near-fatal encounter. Nothing to see here. Yay! We just made another friend! Victory! Boom. We didn't die! Yay! Alright. Well, that was the correct path, but we still have to go down the incorrect path before we can move on to our next potential friend. Here we go. I love how doing crime is the correct response to the situation. So let's go with the incorrect response, which is to uh, not do crime. No more crime, please. You've already got a hell of a rap sheet. Maybe it would be best not to add any new skills that could lead you into temptation. Fair enough. Would you care to go for a stroll? It's a nice night. It's a windy, unsettled night, and it looks like rain. You suppose that's nice, depending on your definition. You'd absolutely love to take a stroll. That's your whole vibe recently. Strolling. You follow her out through, the th out through a little back gate and into the street. Are we gonna get cold in the street? You leave the cafe behind and are quickly consumed by the drift of the midnight crowd. You brace for the inevitable, pitying, hostile looks you get whenever you go out in public should have mentioned that you try to avoid large groups, but strangely, no one even glances at you. It's like Boulder exudes a sneaky aura that encompasses the both of you. As you walk, you ask her if she really believes in fate, like the two of you were always going to meet and nothing could have happened any differently no matter what you did. Boulder gives you a thoughtful, sidelong glance. Hmm, well, that would imply that none of our choices matter and that causality is inevitable. That randomness is irrelevant. Right? Uh, sure. You scamper to keep up with her, both physically and mentally. For someone who asks you to take a stroll, she sure is booking it down the street. Uh, but that disregards our choices. Fate dictates that all possibilities are, by their very nature, necessities. Or rather, the choice you made was the only one you ever could make. I doubt the universe is that simple. Doesn't sound simple to you, but you hum and nod sagely because you want Boulder to think you're deep. Instead of asking yourself whether you were meant to meet me and meant to be here, it makes more sense to wonder what the forces are that have conspired to bring it into being. Well, that would be... exhaustion and ineptitude. <laughs> 
You don't exactly remember what happened, but you're sure it involved something stupid like falling asleep at the wheel and drifting off into another solar system. It had been a rough 48 hours, you know? A lot of escaping and running and punching and stealing of high-powered vehicles. Yes, of course. So... I feel like through the through the exposition, we learn like a teensy bit more every episode about like how we ended up here in the first place. All I know is that we were on Earth, we stole a spaceship, and then we got to Alternia. And I guess based on what we just saw here, it took like 48 hours roughly for us to get from Earth to Alternia somehow in some way. <laughs> yes, of course. I understand. All in a day's work. She stops you at most intersections so she can take surreptitious glances around the corner before gesturing you forward. Every so often, she will turn the two of you around to double back. You aren't exactly sure why. Maybe she thinks you are being followed, but who would follow you from a cafe? All sorts. Uh, but don't worry. I know how to shake off a tail. You cross one of the main thoroughfares, and a big black bird swoops at your heads. You yelp and duck, but when you look around, you see that the bird has landed on Boulder's arm, and she's stroking its back. Oh, must be her Lucis. You brace yourself for it to start talking or some shit like that, because that's what your life is like, that's what your life is like now. But it just sticks its leg out for Boulder to remove a scrap of paper. And it waits, it waits patiently for her to read the message, and then scribble something on the back, before attaching it to the crow and throwing it back into the air. Man, that's some Harry Potter-ass shit. One of my informants wants to rendezvous in meat space. Unusual, but it has been an unusual day. Unusual couple of months, honestly. <laughs> yes, of course. You've had it much harder than I have. What was I thinking? Well, you weren't trying to get into a contest of whose life sucks more, but yeah, it's been rough. You appreciate that she can see that. Of all the planets to be forced to, Alternia is... well... not ideal. <laughs> not the worst, but you still have my sympathies. Is there anything at all you like about it? What, about Alternia? Well, you're kind of digging this whole night is day thing. You're from a di you're from a diurnal species, but you've always been a bit of a night owl. Also, not to brag, but you've made some seriously cool friends. Yes, I've been following your exploits. Your friendship acquisition procedures are really quite impressive. Aw, now you're blushing. You ask Boulder how she knows that much about your exploits, because it's only pretty recently that you've had any sort of real social media presence. You suppose she could have got Gorgle Alert like Malik did, but... Quick, around here. Boulder leads you into a deserted lot between two buildings. There's nothing here except some broken bottles and a pile of old rubber tires. She leaves you behind the tire pile. I almost, I had to stop and think about how to say tire pile for a moment. You could say tile pyre by accident. So there is that. She leaves you behind the tire pile to keep watch. Although she is probably just doing it to get you out of the way, which fair. <laughs> then she then she heads out into the center of the lot, presumably to wait for her contact. You sit there twiddling your thumbs, trying to suppress the desire to pull out your phone. That doesn't seem very covert ops. You're just starting to get really antsy, jittering your leg and cracking your knuckles and digging a little hole in the dirt with a stick, when you hear something strange beneath the wind. A swish, followed by a thunk. Boulder jerks and clutches her neck. Oh, oh gosh. Is this this? So we're, is this the same person who poisoned Boulder in the shop, but they tailed us to the to the junkyard and got her there? Boulder jerks and clutches her neck. You writhe up from your rubber pile, sending tires sending tires flying. You look wildly up at the surrounding buildings, trying to find out where the projectile came from. You don't see anyone, not even a lone gunman. You run for your new friend, not spending a thought for your own safety. The clouds move overhead like someone has put them on fast forward, the wind rattling the trash on the pavement. By the time you reach Boulder, she has begun to twitch in hard spasms. One look at the blotchy stain spreading across her neck, and there's no doubt. You both say it at the same time. POISON! <laughs> we don't have an antidote, but there is one more way. Quickly, remove the poisoned limb! 
You fall to your knees beside her. Oh god, what are you supposed to do? You don't know anything about poison or first aid or anything else useful. God, why are you such a fucking waste of space? You could have been gaining some life skills instead of just loafing around like a complete idiot. You- Stop. Don't. There isn't time. This stuff acts fast. Boulder takes hard, gasping breaths between each word. Her eyes are going cloudy. She makes a desperate grab for your hands. Listen. For the first time, her voice rises above a whisper. Her grip is surprisingly strong. You tell her to save her strength, but she shakes her head so hard her hat falls off. I'm not important! You tell her to stop being dramatic. Of course she's important. I'm not being dramatic! Well, maybe a little, because I'm dying. But still, remember <coughs> what I said about fate. Fuck fate. You don't want anything to do with it if this is the kind of shit it's going to pull on you. So many of your friends have died because of you, because of your incredible inability to... to... The world twists and stutters. Your guts are a record, and that record is skipping. For a moment, you're sure that whoever that poison-shooting bastard is has shot you too, but then your vision clears and you feel the rain on the back of your neck. The world rolling back to you and the world rolling back to you in waves of color and sound. The dark sky splits open on a fault line of lightning. Boulder's hand goes limp in your own. With shaking fingers, you reach out to touch her motionless cheek. Fuck. Fuck! Not again! Why? An uncontrollable wave of despair washes over you as you look down at the corpse of this girl you barely know. You... Where are all of these feelings coming from? There's... There's honestly too many of them. Why are they... <clears throat> oh no! Oh, so sad. So sad. Also, but that... But the way that ended, though, is kind of weird, though. Like... It's almost as if... Th it's almost as if the protagonist... Is, like, starting to gain, like... A bit of awareness of the fact that we can choose, like, multiple... Paths? Yeah, that's what I that's what I'm wondering about heterosapiens. Like the line about too many of our friends died, and I'm like, is that true though? Because like all of the like all of the like success endings in each episode involve us like making friends and nobody dying. So But there are like some alternate endings where some friends do in fact die, so I think I think this is what was interesting to me about this particular path is like the what uh what Boulder was saying about like fate and like we really only had one choice and I'm thinking in the back of my mind well actually no we have a few choices in each episode and I'm wondering if like all of the choices that we made are in fact all of the choices that we made and I'm wondering if there's like some time shenanigans happening now because it is the Homestuck universe and yeah she was talking about paradoxes before and. Yeah, now I'm wondering if there are shenanigans happening. Some, like, time shenanigans going on. Paradoxes, yo. Paradox space. Oh my gosh, again? Oh, there was more! There was more! Must I do everything myself? What was that? Well, that was interesting. That was very interesting. Holy cow. Okay, all right, all right, all right, okay. I see you, Hive Swap Friendson. I see you. 